I mean, I'm, I, I might be an idiot, but I'm not stupid. Hey, so my name's Ken and I'm on a journey to lose as much weight as I possibly can so I can become a fat guy no more. Holy Moses, where has the time gone? This summer just seems to be flying by. I know it's been several weeks since I last sat down to do one of these videos. Um, and, and every week it seems like there's something going on. So, um, so I know it's been a while and I just want to say thank you so much for, uh, for coming back and watching this one. I do appreciate it. And while I'm at it, I want to say a very special thank you to Lauren Harvey for watching these videos. I greatly appreciate your support. Thank you so much. So what's been going on since my last video? Well, um, a lot, actually. Um, a lot of traveling, a lot of going and seeing, and a lot of doing. Um, only being able to do it thanks to Manjaro. Um, so I'm actually kind of planning some full recap videos um, to go along with those shorts that I did. I just don't know if I want to post them right here on this channel since it's not directly related to weight loss. I mean, it shows the results of losing weight, but it doesn't talk about weight loss at all. Um, does show eating some foods I maybe shouldn't have, but I did enjoy. So let me, let me know. Comment down below if you would. Do you want to see my full trip recaps as well? Or should I keep them on my personal page like I plan to? Let me know what you think. Comment down below. But a quick way to recap what I've been doing since the last video is early July, the wife and I went down to Houston. We spent a few days down there, went to, uh, went to see the Mariners play the Astros uh, three different times at Minute Maid Park. Um, she has never been to Houston, and I haven't been there since oh, May of 2012. So it was great to get back. It was really good to see the Mariners, especially to see them take two out of three. Um, we didn't make it to the fourth game that series, but they ended up uh, winning three out of four. So I wish we could have stayed for that last one. But either way, it was a fun weekend, especially since the wife got to go with me. Um, got home, had 10 days, 10 days before I hit the road again. This time I was headed to Phoenix originally um, to see the Mariners. Um, but I decided to do Route 66. I think I talked about it a little bit in my last video. Um, so I left Oklahoma City on the morning of the 19th of July, headed westbound. And I drove all the way to Santa Monica, California on Route 66. Um, it was amazing. Stops along the way like um, Sand Hill Curiosity Shop in Eric, Oklahoma, um, where I got to meet this guy who, <laughs> he's definitely a character, but he's one of the main ones that inspired Toe Mater's character in, in the movie Cars. Um, he's he's just crazy, just absolutely crazy. Let me let me show you a quick little clip of him singing here. So are you guys ready to cruise some other road? Okay, let's get out there on that bike. Let's turn the key on. Let's put the pedal on the metal. Let's go in gear. And let's sleep rubber all the way down Route 66. <laughs> His name is Harley Russell and he's at the Sand Hill Curiosity Shop in Eric, Oklahoma. I also got to go by the Cadillac Ranch in Amarillo, Texas. That's my first time uh, actually getting to see it. I'm really surprised that I've never done that before, but I've only actually been through Amarillo a couple times previously. So this time I, I took the time and spent probably a couple hours there, honestly, doing a, doing a little time lapse as well as um, just people watching, just enjoying it, just watching the things that they spray paint on these Cadillacs and it just, I don't know, just the joy that people get out of being there. It was a lot of fun. I stayed a couple nights at some, uh, at some rather uh, popular places to stay on Route 66, like this one here in Tucumcari, New Mexico at the Blue Swallow. It was amazing. Even though I didn't meet my grandparents at all, they had passed on long before I, uh, before I was born. I like to say it felt like going home to grandma's. Just everything about it was, was incredible. The next night I was in Gallup, New Mexico at a place called El Rancho Hotel. Um, this place is quite popular. It's been around since like the 30s, late 30s. 
um, and it's known to be haunted. Um, if you watched my short, you'll know now I agree with that. From there, a couple quick stops that I had that I really enjoyed um, were the Painted Desert as part of um, Petrified Forest National Park. There is a Route 66 connection as it is the only national park that Route 66 once ran through um, before it was a national park. I love the town of Seligman, Arizona. Seligman was amazing. Seligman is the town that inspired Radiator Springs and the movie Cars. And I mean, it's got so much character, so much soul. It is just an amazing little town. Unfortunately, about an hour or so after I got there, a big storm moved in. Um, yeah, it rained so much, so hard, so fast that there were things floating down the middle of the road. But once it moved through that evening, I got back out and went and checked it out and it was a lot of fun. And I got to spend a little bit of time there the next morning before I had to get out of there and, and push on. That day took me through Oatman where I got to visit and, and play with and feed actually the, uh, the famous Burroughs donkeys of Oatman, Arizona. That was spectacular. I had so much fun doing that. Um, from there, it was cross the line into the state of California for the final state, the final push there. Um, and I ended up staying that first night in San Bernardino um, at the Wigwam Motel. These are uh, quite famous too. Um, so I wanted to take the chance to get to enjoy that. And I did, it was a lot of fun. The next day I made my way to Santa Monica and to the pier and to the end of the trail sign, um, signifying that I had gone 1,522 miles on Route 66, a little over half of the way. The next day I was uh, on my way out and I actually got to stop by and see what it, uh, is referred to as Pee Wee's Dinosaurs um, in Cabazon. Um, these were uh, prominently featured in Pee Wee's Big Adventure. This happened to be just, uh, just a couple days before he passed away. So um, I'm glad I got to check them out again. But that day I made my way into Joshua Tree National Park for my first time in two years, and actually only my second time ever getting to Joshua Tree. Um, but this time I was 133 pounds lighter. And so I, uh, I took, the, took the time to, to really realize how far I've come since the last time I was at Joshua Tree. And I'll talk a little bit more about that here in a little bit. From Joshua Tree, it was into Phoenix where I got to see the Mariners for three games as well as uh, see a few other things. And then I left there, went to Tucson, where I got to see uh, Saguaro National Park. From Tucson, it was over to White Sands National Park. Um, yeah, it seems to be a theme here. I'm hitting some national parks along the way. Um, the next day, I got into uh, to Roswell. I was really quite surprised that, uh, that Roswell wasn't just a small, little, tiny tourist trap. It's actually a pretty good-sized town. As a matter of fact, they got three different subway locations. I don't know why a place that size needs three different subway locations, but they've got three. Then I went down to Carlsbad Caverns. That would be my fifth and final national park on this trip. That was something that I've been wanting to do for years, but I've never been in that part of the country. So I'm glad I finally got that opportunity. And that's also something I'll talk about here in a little bit. That next day was my last full day of the trip. I drove all the way over to Arlington, met a friend, went to the Rangers game, and then the next day I was back home. 
So yeah, it's been a it's been a crazy crazy kind of uh, kind of month, honestly. Just busy, constantly going. The ability to go, um, the want to go, is is just it's there. Have, losing this weight just makes me want to go and see and do and explore and enjoy this country so much more than I have in years. And for that, I am I am very thankful to Manjaro. So let's just say it. What has the scale said? <laughs> well, again, I haven't been tracking anything. Um, I haven't been doing it since summer, basically, since the beginning of baseball season, maybe a little bit before that. I'm still not. I just, I'm not. I decided not to, and I'm stuck to those guns, and I'm just not going to do it. Um, I'm thinking I'll probably pick it up again, maybe around the 1st of October. Um, but for now, I'm not. Um, so when it comes to the scale... I got no clue what it says. I haven't been on that thing and since the last time I did a video. I don't care what it says at this point. Um, I could feel um, the ebbs and flows of, of fluid holding on to me when I go out on the road. When I come back, it releases. So I know that I'm doing something, but where I am overall, I don't know. Um, at this point, as of a few weeks ago, I decided that I'm not going to weigh again until my one year mark on Manjaro, which is September 2nd. So I'm gonna do it then and we'll see what it says and whatever it says, it says. Um, I know in the back of my head that it's easy for me to say that right now, but once I start tracking again, that means I'm gonna get super serious about weight loss again and that's when it's gonna change. But for now, um, I'm just enjoying, just enjoying what life brings me everything that uh, that I can do, everything that I've been able to do. I'm just very thankful for that. So I think those things are a much better indicator of how I'm doing than what the scale says, honestly. The scale could stay flat and be even for months if it wants to. But if I'm able to go out and do the things like I've been able to do, man, that, that's what matters. Maybe this is the weight I'm supposed to be. I don't know. But um, I hope not. <laughs> I'd like to get down quite a bit less than I am. But if I can do things at this weight now, just imagine what I can do once I get even further. So with that said, let's talk about some non-scale victories. I had a few on this trip that, um, that really, really almost made me cry. Uh, made me smile, made me happy made me realize that over, just over a year ago, let alone a couple years ago, last time I was in the California area, there is zero chance that I could have done these things. And if it wasn't for Manjaro, um, I wouldn't have been able to do them this time. I wouldn't even have been there for one if it wasn't for Manjaro. Um, but I wouldn't have been able to do any of these things. And so um, the trip in general <laughs> is one. I mean, that was, uh, what was it, 15 nights on the road? Um, go, 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 several hours every day, um, sometimes eight hours, nine hours. We're not talking just driving on the interstate like I'm used to doing, point A to point B. Um, this is going a little ways, getting out of the car, checking out something, maybe going into a shop, you know, getting back in the car, driving a little ways, getting out of the car again, those kind of things. I mean, it was, it was exhaustive at times, um, but a lot of fun. And that's, that's one non-scale victory for sure, because there's no chance I could have done that without Manjaro. And again, it doesn't matter what the weight on the scale says. The fact that I can do these things is a victory in itself. When I got to Santa Monica, I was able to park on the pier, which was nice. Um, and I walked over to it. And I didn't quite want the, that part of the trip to be over with yet. You know what I mean? So I didn't take my picture with the sign yet. I... Um, I walked down to the far end of the pier. Okay, well, not the far end, because the far end actually has a little fishing platform. You kind of go down to it. Um, but I didn't go down there because there's people fishing. So I, I stood up above and then ended up getting me a seat on a bench. And I just, just took it all in. I will admit, too, um, once I got to the part of the pier where the water was coming under and you could smell that Pacific Ocean air. Oh, man. It just, 
yeah. It made me miss home. It made me miss Washington, going to the beach. Just that smell was, was fantastic. And I broke down in tears just standing there. I had people looking at me. I don't, I don't care. I just don't care. It was that emotional to me. Um, I've only lived in Oklahoma for a little over a year and a half. But I guess I didn't realize how much I missed that clean, crisp air of the Pacific Northwest. No offense to anybody that thinks Oklahoma is God's country. This place is dusty. Um, there's a reason why there's a car wash on every corner down here, like there is a Starbucks on every corner in the Seattle area. Um, people wash their cars all the time because it is so much dust and that red dirt up in the air that when you actually get to smell that clean, crisp ocean air, man, you just, you just got to take it in. And I did. I stood there just take a deep breath after deep breath, just enjoying it. I was on the pier for probably a good two hours or more, honestly. Um, I had walked, like I said, I'd walked all the way to the back. And then I made the slow walk, just checking things out, people watching all the way back up to the end of the trail sign. And then I got to meet Ian, who runs the 66 to Cali booth um, there that talks about uh, driving the entire length of Route 66. He was there, so I got to talk to him about my trip. We actually talked about, um, about the pens that I got for my Route 66 hat. Um, I don't know, is that blurry? It almost looks... And so each one of these represents a place that I was, something that I saw, something that I did. Um, each one of them holds um, a lot of memories for me because of this trip. So um, hopefully that's not too blurry, but I started right here at Pop Soda Ranch in Arcadia, Oklahoma. And I ended up right here at the end of the trail sign in, uh, in Santa Monica, California. Um, so this is my souvenir of that trip, along with the memories, the photos, the video. I don't collect a whole lot of things, but that one, that one I absolutely wanted to do. The, it seems like it's a traditional thing when you travel Route 66 is to get the pens. Um, so I, I did, even if it was only 1,522 miles of it, still a lot of fun. And that thing right there shows you all of the memories that, uh, that I'll cherish forever. So. Um, but after talking with him, I left there and I headed towards Anaheim to meet up with a friend. Um, I had a couple hours to kill, actually. I was surprised at how easy the traffic was getting into L.A., um, really getting to Santa Monica from San Bernardino, and then from Santa Monica to, to L.A., to Anaheim, was incredibly easy. So I had plenty of time. I stopped... Uh, for, for some lunch, I got me a plant-based Chicago-style dog at Portillo's. If anybody uh, has a Portillo's near them, yeah, you understand. Um, we don't have any here in Oklahoma. Our closest one is just outside of Dallas, so a little over three hours away. So I had lunch there, and while I was there, I got to thinking that uh, something I could get my wife would be um, a couple t-shirts, Disney 100 t-shirts. She's going with a friend in October up to Marceline, Missouri, um, which is the hometown of Walt Disney. So I figured it'd be neat if she had a couple Disney shirts to wear. So I decided to go to downtown Disney. So when I decided to do it, I remember the last couple times I was there and how easy it was to park. And you're right there by the old uh, ESPN zone. I don't know what it is now. Um, quick and easy to get in and out of there. Um, this time, not so much. Um, they've got so much construction going on that they put you in a lot that is a long ways away and you have to walk all the way down this corridor, go through security, come in to where I used to be used to going. Then you got to walk all the way back and then all the way back. And it was, you know, mid 90s. Um, I was sweating bullets the whole time and trying to rush so I can meet that friend of mine. And uh, I did it. I, I absolutely did it. And so by the time I got back to the car, and yes, I'll admit, I sat down a couple times. I mean, I'm, I, I might be an idiot, but I'm not stupid. You know, it was hot. Got me some water and drank some water. And, and I sat down a couple different times and gave me a chance to talk to other people. So that was great. But I looked it up. And um, from where I was parked 
to where World of Disney is and back is just a little over 1.2 miles. Um, so yeah, I walked 1.2 miles in that freaking blistering heat in Anaheim. I got to say, I'm pretty, pretty proud of myself for that. I, I was very excited and I'm glad that I was able to do it for one. And uh, it didn't take me long to realize that, <laughs> man, I wouldn't even have thought of doing something like that a year ago, let alone two years ago, the last time I was in town. But this time I did it, and um, I'm very, very proud of that. Another non-scale victory I had was when I got to Phoenix. I actually took that Thursday. Um, we had no game that day, so it was an off day for me. I could just uh, chill, relax at the resort. So I took off and drove all over the Phoenix area, as you can see from this picture right here. Um, that's quite the loop around uh, from Scottsdale down to Tempe, Mesa, over to Surprise, up to Peoria, back. Um, there's 10 different Cactus League ballparks, and I went and seen them all. Um, it was 120 degrees that day. <laughs> I drove around to all of them, and I got out at each and every one of them. And I walked around, and I checked out as much as I could of the parks. Um, you know, some of them you can't get too close to. Um, so I did what I could. Um, but at one, uh, Camelback Ranch, where the White Sox and Dodgers... Uh, spring. A security guard saw me and I thought for sure he was going to tell me I had to leave. I was right by the home plate gate. Instead, he came over and asked me if I wanted to go in and take a closer look. So that's what I did. Yeah, that's really cool. I'm, I'm so glad that he did that really nice guy. Um, I told him I wouldn't use his name so he doesn't get in trouble, but that was really, really nice of him. So um, by the time I got back to the resort, it had been seven hours of driving and walking around in that amazing heat <laughs> at least it's a dry heat there now when people talk about the dry heat of phoenix i mean it really is it's only 14 percent uh percent humidity at 120 degrees so that's i mean you can breathe with that here in oklahoma city yesterday it was uh, like 95 but it was like 62 percent humidity so that you, you open the door to go outside and you just start choking immediately because the air is so heavy so full of moisture it's it's just it's so different out in phoenix so that was great i really enjoyed getting to do that and honestly the last thing that i can really say that really stuck out at me as a non-scale victory was when i went to carlsbad um, i did not walk <laughs> the ramp the typical hike down i took the elevator down which is crazy in itself that you go 750 feet underground in less than a minute's time as you can see from this video right here, I mean, it goes it goes pretty quick. I've sped this up, but trust me, it's it's a minute to go uh, to go down 750 feet and to come back up it. It's right at a minute as well. So that's kind of cool. But then when I got down there, I went and I walked around and I just went and checked things out. It's very humid, believe it or not. It's 56 degrees, but so much moisture in the air down there. Um, again, that's partially what formed these is. Uh, calcium deposits and other minerals from from water um, and so it's uh it, there's a lot of moisture in the air and on the ground which made it kind of slick to walk um, in the past i would have looked at it and went yeah uh -uh, not gonna happen and turned right back around and headed back up to the top this time um, i took my time and i walked some of the some of the paths which were small they were uneven you're doing this all the time and kind of slanted and again wet they did have handrails on the outside so if you could get over by one hold on a little bit and i did do that but um it was a lot of fun and if you've ever been to the carlsbad caverns you'll know what i'm talking about it is amazing to see um and then i got uh got out of there it's probably down there about an hour and a half got out of there got up to the top and started talking to my wife and realized that the loop i did was 1.3 miles 1.3 miles. I walked 1.3 miles, 750 feet or so underground. That just blows my mind. Absolutely blows my mind. Um, and, and it blew hers too. She couldn't believe I'd done it. So um, yeah, that makes the two of us. But what I really want to point out here, um, between it, um, the ballparks in Phoenix, 
and the pier in Santa Monica, I didn't have my cane at all. Left it in the car. Did take it with me. Um, I mean, I brought it with me on the trip, but for each one of those stops, I just left it in the car. And that's what I've actually done most of the time. I think the only time that I've really brought it with me um, on this trip was one time in Joshua Tree when I did the short walk up to Skull Rock. And then when I went to the ball games in, in Texas, as well as the ones in Phoenix, I brought it with me. Other than that, I didn't feel a need. And the fact that I am to that point now, if any of you remember my six month video, um, I was addicted to my cane. Um, and now to the point where I don't bring it with me all the time. So I'm very proud of that. And that is yet another non-scale victory. Uh, I mean, again, I tell you, there's been a lot of them. And again, it all comes down to, it doesn't really matter what the scale says, just the fact that I can do these things. And so it can only get better from here as weight keeps coming off. Even if it's slower, um, I, I could tell. I could tell by the way my clothes fit. I mean, look at this thing, you know. It's it's still coming off, but it's, it's probably been slow. Um, I'm not even gonna venture a guess, but it's slow for me, I guess I should say. Um, but I haven't been strict. And when you're on the road, it's, it's kind of tough to do that. So that's why I'm kind of looking for that October date. Um, everything will be somewhat back to normal. And I can, uh, I can get back on and, and start tracking and making sure that I'm getting what I need and not having the things that I really shouldn't. And, and hopefully that'll, that'll jumpstart my weight loss again. And then on top of that, be able to go walking more often. Right now, I feel like I could probably go walking every day um, because I can. <laughs> There's been a couple times where I've gone out, um, but nothing, nothing major yet. And I still don't want to do that really until I get below the 400 mark into the 300s. After 200 total pounds lost, then we'll start, we'll start walking a little more. So if you saw my community post um, the other day, last Monday, you'll know that I didn't have surgery last Monday like I was supposed to. Um, probably still see a little bit maybe, you know, right here where the marking is. I can't seem to get that stuff to come off. Um, she, uh, uh, yeah. So I had to be at the hospital at 5 a.m. to do check-in. Surgery was supposed to be at 7. I finally got to my room about 6. Um, about a quarter to 7, they came in, did some blood work. Um, it was quite hard for the gal to finally get the IV into me properly. Um, but she did. Um, she got that done. The surgeon came in, marked me up like I was showing. Um, and then we just sat there. And a little bit after seven, I asked my wife, I said, what, what time is it? She, she told me it was like 7.06. I said, you know, last time I was already in the ER, I'm ready to go, I think something's going on. And about 10 minutes later, the surgeon came in and let me know that the anesthesiologist that they needed for my procedure is not there, will not be there, and so they had to postpone my surgery for at least a week. Yeah. So if you remember my video um, before my last surgery back in April, this one wasn't as bad of worry, but it still took me quite a bit to get to that point where I'm going into that surgery and I'm like, okay, let's do this. Um, and then they just send me home. So here we are. This is Sunday. Um, the 13th of, of August, supposedly. I have surgery at 7 a.m. tomorrow morning. Um, and I'll have to be up at 3.30 so I could be to the hospital by 5 to do the check-in, to hopefully be ready for surgery at 7. And then if it goes like it did the first time, I should be headed home by about 9.30ish. Um, and, and we go from there. And hopefully that's what happens, but I'll have no clue until tomorrow. So with that said, I can see the timer uh, on my camera that says that I have been rambling on and on and on and on for a long time. So I'm going to cut this um, not so short right here. I appreciate every one of you that's still watching. I thank you so much for rooting me on. And as always, I'll see you in the next one.
Thanks for watching. If you'd like to follow me on my journey to become a fat guy no more, hit that subscribe button and don't forget to hit that bell so you can get notifications every time I upload a new video.